This video is going to show you how to turn a spore print into liquid culture and we're going to go from spore print to agar and then finally transfer into liquid culture. I'm going to be using a still air box for the full thing so don't worry about the flow hood you can see in the background. This is going to be taught in a way anyone who watches the video can repeat it at home in their still air box. Two points I want to get across right. Firstly Spore prints are never sterile, so there's always going to be a little bit of contaminant in there and you might have to do some cleanup work, which would just involve doing agar transfers until you get a clean culture. And the second point is, do not go crazy with your spore print when you're germinating spores on agar, because if you haven't seen a lot of mycelium before, you're not going to have a clue what you're looking at. And I'm going to show you a method to germinate your spores so that when it grows out you've actually got something where you can go okay that looks like mycelium instead of it just looks like chaos on a plate so for this video i just took a simple spore print at my kitchen counter to prove the point that you don't have to do everything in sterile conditions but the correct way to do this is get inside a still air box with your tin foil on the roll Take a piece of the tin foil straight off the roll and place it down. Take a second piece of tin foil and then fold it in half. Put your mushroom on top of the foil on the bottom and then place the folded piece of tin foil on top to create a little humidity tent. Come back in about five hours and you'll have a ring of spores and it'll be fairly clean it'll not be perfect but you should be able to germinate these no problem Inside the still air box now, this is going to be the example on how not to do it, okay? I've got the inoculation loop in my hand, that's probably not the best idea. There's nothing wrong with the way that I take the lids off the agar pots, that's perfectly fine. Exposing the spore print, that's perfectly fine, and I even flame sterilise the inoculation loop. However, when it comes to the actual inoculation, I lift up absolutely loads of spores and then spread loads of spores with no rhyme or reason all over the plate and what that creates is thousands of colonies on the agar and you're not going to know what you're looking at. You're going to end up with so much mycelium that you won't be able to tell if there's mould or mycelium on the plate, you won't be able to tell whether you want to cut away a piece, it's just going to look like total chaos. This is exactly what I mean when I say it's going to look like chaos. I mean, look at these plates. You can see colonies everywhere just growing. Um, this one here has contaminated. But when this one's fully, fully germinated, you can see this is just thousands and thousands of colonies. And if you're doing this for the first time, you're not going to have a clue what you're looking at. Let's do it again and let's do it a bit better this time. Exactly the same situation, I've put a few pots in there so I've got a few chances to get some clean pieces of germinated mycelium. I'm going to be using a scalpel handle this time and I'm going to wrap the inoculation loop around the end of the scalpel handle. This will benefit us in two ways, first it gives us some extra distance between the high nutrients agar and our hands and secondly it means that we can flame sterilize higher up the inoculation loop. Mm -hmm. 
This is exactly the same spore print as before and we're just going to lift up a small amount of spores from the print. And then we are going to transfer the spores to the agar plate but we're going to do it differently from before because we will go in to the agar plate and out from the same angle just about and we're just tapping the inoculation loop in the center and then coming out at the same angle And what you see here is four days growth from inoculation and you can see there's a very defined line where we went into the agar and then out and that's where all the spores have either dropped or where we tapped it in the center. So instead of having it all over the plate we can see the defined line where we made the inoculation. So this video is about 14 days later and this plate is looking good for transfer to liquid culture now as you can start to see some patterns forming. So we're going to move back into the still air box and inoculate some liquid culture. I always get questions about why you put tinfoil over the jars. Look, if you sterilize a jar of anything, right, and then put tinfoil around the top up to the neck, that means until you take that tinfoil off, underneath the tinfoil is sterile. Take the foil off the top, loosen all the lids, organize a still air box, and finally assemble your scalpel. I'm going to cover why I'm cutting in different areas at the end of the video but yeah just cut away a small amount of agar and then just knock it off into the liquid culture jar. Because I put the scalpel down and the actual tip of the scalpel was touching the top of that pot, I've took it out to flame sterilize it before I cut another wedge off the agar. The reason that my agar wedges keep sticking to the side of the jar is because I've poured the agar too thin. So this is another point at. Make sure that your agar holds a little bit of weight so that it can actually drop off into your jaws. If you create thin agar trying to be tight and save your agar, what you end up with is just 
sticky agar which sticks to the edge of any jaw that you have even grain jaws it becomes a total nightmare you want thick ish agar wedges which have a little bit of weight on them so that they'll drop into the jaw easily So I've just took the lid off for this transfer so you can see where I'm cutting the agar away from on the transfers and I'm just going to discuss now why I've chose them areas. So if you just look at the agar plate, you can kind of see here there's some symmetry and then you can see the leading edge which is the strongest mycelium which is growing the fastest. A load of genetics have probably fused to create these patterns and you can see where the, the borders of each of them are and I'm just taking a small cut from the leading um, section. Not the very edge but just behind the very edge. I totally ignore this bit along the bottom because that's again like a zone of chaos. There's no symmetry there and I'm not really sure what I'm cutting away. But these like radial fans along the top you can clearly see is clean mycelium so that's where I'm taking the cuts from. Not the very edge but just behind the edge. Guys, I've been working on an ebook which kind of covers the hardest part of mushroom cultivation, which is sterile technique. If you're interested in that, then go to the link down below, click it, have a read, and decide if it's something you would be interested in.